the certainty equivalent approach is guaranteed return that the management would accept rather than accepting higher but uncertain return applicable to different cash flow because if you know that certainty equivalent based on that assumption certainty equivalent coefficient it is very easy certainty equivalent are decided by the management based on the perception of risk based on the management perception of risk they are taking up the certainty coefficients Hello everybody, I am Divya, Assistant Professor from Department of Commerce and Management lecturing Vidya Ashram First Grade College, Mysuru, the Temple of Excellence. Today I welcome you all for the session 4 on your Unit 2 that is your Risk Analysis and Capital Budgeting. Moving forward, uh, the agenda for today's discussion. As I have told you in the last class, we will be discussing the other technique of certainty equivalent approach. That is your conventional technique, second technique that we are supposed to read in today's class that is certainty equivalent method for risk analysis, the steps in certain equivalent approach, the problems based on that, the advantages and disadvantages of certainty equivalent method, risk adjusted discount rate versus the equivalent approach and the other techniques, the other remaining techniques that we had is sensitivity analysis and the scenario analysis. So all these the topic that we'll be discussing in today's class. So if you learn this class, you will be able to understand about the risk analysis thoroughly with the problems. Moving forward, certainty equivalent approach. So it will it will work on certain principles. So what is then principle? Suppose I might give you a task. So what is the task? I will say, I will toss a coin. If the coin tosses head, I'll give you 30,000 30, rupees. If the coin tosses tail, I'll be giving you all what? Zero rupees. So if you don't take up any of the challenges, I'll be giving you 3,000 rupees. So what do you do? Some of the persons who are a person who takes up the risk, who said that they challenge and they toss the coin. But some of the person, what they say, ma'am, 3000 rupees is sufficient for us. So we'll keep the 3000 rupees for as an equivalent for taking up rather than taking up the risk. So that principle is all about your certainty equivalent approach. So certain amount in a project will be expected. The return is expected. So what the risk perception here it has is they will take up the amount whatever the expected it is rather than the unexpected amount because it is equivalent to the taking up the risk. So higher the risk higher the return but at the same time if this uh, amount is taken it is equivalent to taking up the risk. So thinking this points in mind so we have a method to adjust the risk that is your certainty equivalent approach. So let us look into that. Definition as per CIMA. So what is the CIMA stands for? Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. So CIMA stands for Chartered Institute of Management Accountant. They has given a terminology. So what is that? An approach to dealing with the risk in a capital budgeting contest. So it involves expressing risky future cash flow in terms of certain cash flow which would be considered by the decision maker. So by the decision maker, they have to consider the certain equivalent approach. So how they consider? So whatever the risk taking up rather than taking up the amount riskier, they might go for the lesser riskier amount. It is equivalent for taking up the risk. As I have told you, tossing a coin, you get 30,000 rupees. But if you get head you get 30 but if you uh, get tail you will get 0 rupees but rather than taking up the risk you are getting 3000 rupees. So based on that principle only they feel that taking up the less risk is equivalent to taking up the higher risk. The certainty equivalent approach is guaranteed return that the management would accept rather than accepting higher but uncertain return. So what management accept rather than accepting the higher return they accept what? They accept the return which is expected by the management. This approach allows the decision maker to incorporate his or her utility function into the analysis in this approach a set of less cash flows is generated in place of original cash flow in this method what happens a set of less 
cash flow you will get it rather than the the cash flows the original cash flow we get because we are analyzing what is the equivalent amount less risk we are taking at the same time the cash flow also we get less rather than the original cash flow moving forward this is the formula we have certain steps to be followed directly we'll go to the problem and check out what is the answer and the how to calculate the certainty equivalent approach step 1 is what to take up the coefficient what is this coefficient certainty equivalent coefficient will be given in the question so that quest that certainty equivalent approach we have to consider and solve the problem moving forward net present value we need to calculate what it stands for net cash flows for the year without risk adjustment the risk adjustment factor or the e certainty equivalent coefficient this is certainty equivalent coefficient which is given in the question itself and this is your risk adjusted discount rate how we have done in the previous class that is using a pv table at rupee 1 so that referring to that table we have taken certain values with that discounting values we have to solve the problem so i stands for your initial amount so this is your formula to calculate the certainty equivalent approach to know your net present value moving forward we have a problem so totally in this chapter we have solved six problems so this is the last problem for today's class so uh, problem 1 was based on the probability problem 2 was based on calculation of expected net present value by using discounting factor problem 3 was based on your calculation of standard deviation and variation problem 4 was all about calculation of coefficient of variation problem 5 was all about your risk adjusted a discount rate technique by using risk free rate as well as risk premium and the last problem for this chapter that is your certainty equivalent approach problem if investment proposal is 45 lakh so what is your investment proposal 45 lakh and the risk free rate is 5% so discounting factor you have to see in your table at 5% for how many years for 4 years calculate net present value under certainty equivalent approach so in your examination particularly if they mention you all you have to solve under certainty equivalent approach or risk adjusted discount rate technique you have to solve or else if they give you the cash flows and the years based on what is given in the question if you solve that you will understand number of years is given expected cash flows are given in the question if certainty equivalent coefficients are given in the question so then it is 100% it is a problem based on certainty equivalent problem so you have to solve under certainty equivalent approach so certainty equivalent is given in the question so by this let us calculate so what was the formula the formula was certainty equivalent uh, coefficient into cash flows divided by or if you use the table you need to multiply with the discounting factor and then total the factor and deduct it with the initial investment so as i have told you if you use the table what you have to do years expected cash flow certainty equivalent coefficient if you multiply this you will get your certainty equivalent what you get if you multiply certainty equivalent so this is a homework for you my dear students you have to solve this in a table so i have put in a formula but you solve it in a table because it is very easy if you put it in a tabular form and study so as per your reference i am teaching you all so this is years first column is what you have to take up the years the second column is expected cash flow the third column is certainty equivalent coefficient so all this is given in the question you need to multiply this expected cash flow as well as certainty coefficient value so if you multiply you'll get what you'll get certainty equivalent value with that certainty equivalent value you have to multiply the discounting rate so what you need to multiply what is what will be this column will be 1 this column will be 2 3 and four your fifth column will be your discounting factor referring the pv table for year 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 and uh, year 4 for five 
percent you have to see that for 5% and take up the discounting value multiply the discounting value with the certainty equivalent value total it and then deduct it from the initial investment if you deduct it from the initial investment and whatever answer you get will be what your net present value So this I have taught you how to do it in a tabular form and if you want it to apply as a formula you can apply it as this. So 10 lakh is the net cash flow, this is certainty equivalent value and this is your discounting factor value and if you add all that number and deduct it from the initial investment the answer you get is 5,34,570 so that will be your net present value under certainty equivalent approach so this is how you calculate net present value for your certainty equivalent approach if you are going around the formula but tabular form I have taught you follow the tabular form it will be easy for you all to understand both the answers you get in a similar way the advantages of certainty equivalent method the certainty equivalent method is simple and easy to understand and apply. It can be easily calculated for different risk levels applicable to different cash flow because if you know that certainty equivalent based on that assumption certainty equivalent coefficient it is very easy. For example, in a particular year a higher risk is associated with the cash flow. It can be easily adjusted with the net present value can be calculated accordingly. Moving forward. We have certain disadvantages as well. There is no object or mathematical method for calculating. Based on the certainty equivalent coefficient, we cannot judge what is the risk taken by the company. Certainty equivalent are decided by the management based on the perception of risk. Based on the management perception of risk, they are taking up the certainty coefficients. So, however, the risk perception of the shareholders who are the money lenders for the project is ignored. So, their perception is ignored or based on the uh, management risk perception the risk coefficient values are taken hence it is not used often in a corporate hence it is not used in a corporate decision making so risk adjusted discount rate versus certainty equivalent approach so most probably which is easy they will think risk adjusted discount rate is easy so this is difficult because certainty equivalent coefficient are very difficult than but simple to adjust discount rate anything so this depends this perception depends on the management so some feels that risk adjusted discount rate is easy and some feel that certainty equivalent projects are very easier so let us see what they are telling so certainty equivalent method is superior to risk adjusted discount rate method and it is it does not assume that risk increases with time at constant rate so the in this they are saying the certainty equivalent approach is better than the risk adjusted discount rate. However, it depends on the management. However, it depends on the company who take up the project. Moving forward, the other techniques we have a sensitivity analysis and scenario analysis of understanding the risk. So, when you have a project, we are investing in project A. We have two concepts that has been studied. That is cash outflows and cash inflows. So cash outflows what we are investing. Cash inflows yearly what return we get. So this inflows are constant? No. They are not constant because there are certain variables that have been impacting the factors will be affecting on these cash inflows the returns are not expected the returns are not constant so that variables has to be studied so what is the variable for example we have sales so if sales increases the profit increases the profit increases the return you get the number of product is sold in the market inflation situation arises the consumer will not come and purchase your product at that time the sales will be low so the cash inflow what is coming will not be same so there are various variables that will be affecting in a real market situation for every 
project. So in order to understand that variable and the impact on that variable for our cash inflow. So what is the changes that is there? What is the impact? What is the factors that is influencing? That changes will be studied in your sensitivity analysis. So let us look into that as per Chartered Institute of Management Accountant terminology they gave, they have given a terminology so this is a procedure to assess the changes that has been made in a important variables in order to determine the effect of changes on the planned outcomes as i have told you cash inflow what that has been affected our cash flow how the variables has been affected on our cash inflow that changes will be studied in sensitivity analysis moving forward Particular attention is therefore paid to variable identification because it is very important because it plays a significant role. So what are the different variables in a project we can see? It might be consumer demand. The demand for a particular product will be changing frequently from time to time. So price of a product, the price will vary. Consumer cost per unit, all these are the different variables that will be affecting. So this will be simultaneously affecting all these variables. It will not one by one, it will not affect all together. It will affect the cash inflows. But in sensitivity analysis, we can study only one variable, the changes and the impact on our cash cash flow but to study all the variables as a combination we have a scenario analysis the drawback of sensitivity analysis have led to the growth of your scenario analysis for the upcoming slide will discuss that so if therefore it becomes difficulty to assess changes in the variable impact so to know our project NPV, all this assessment and analysis should be known. Moving forward, these are the different steps to be followed for sensitivity analysis. First, you have to find the variable. What is its influence on our net present value on our cash flow of a particular project? And then we have to establish a mathematical relationship between those variables, analyze that effect and changes in the variables and then calculate the project because it is very important a small minute uh, thing also it is very important for a financial manager to consider before investing a, in a particular project. Scenario analysis as I have told you the sensitivity analysis drawback has led to the growth of scenario analysis. So it is widely used technique because of the limitation of sensitivity analysis. So in sensitivity analysis, it provides the uh, understanding of all the variables together. It All the variables as a combination, it will be studied and the changes and the impact of that variables will be studied in our scenario analysis. So this analysis brings in a probabilities of changes in a key variables and also allow the changes in more than one variables at a time at a time combination together all the variables will be studied moving forward this analysis begin with base case or most likely set values of input variable then go for the worst case so first it will go for the base case and then it will go for the low case so low unit sales low sales high variable cost and so on are the best examples of your scenario analysis variables to study this so that's it for today so all those are the different techniques that we have studied so probability technique the standard deviation technique, variation, coefficient of variation, conventional technique and in today's class we have also discussed what is sensitivity analysis and scenario analysis. So by this we have completed our unit 2 that is risk analysis and capital budgeting. So in the next class I will be explaining you all about our unit 3 that is dividend decisions that is your Walters model and Goddard's model will be discussing the problems on that so until that stay tuned smile is the biggest jewel you can wear keep smiling people thank you